This is Kivumbi 2017. We're here until midnight as we continue to cover various reactions from the ground with regard uh, to that election yesterday and, of course, the reactions that we've been seeing across the day. All right, so my colleagues, remember, I will be joining me different times, really, to just bring us up to speed with what's happening. We have uh, Ben Kitili, who's looking at the latest from Migori County. We also have Duncan Hayamba, who is in Siaya. We'll be listening to them as they talk to the residents there and even they update us on really what has been happening uh, throughout the day in those two counties. But before that, many breathed a sigh of relief in parts of Nyanza after the IEBC announced that it had put off the voting that had been set to take place tomorrow in Luo Nyanza. And as Chris Thyro reports, the IEBC made the announcement just hours after the NASA team had pleaded with them to just do exactly that. Like the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission heard the cry of the NASA resistance movement just hours before the earlier scheduled voting in the four counties of Nyanza region. The IEBC chairman Wafula Chebukati pushing to a later date the planned exercise in Luanyanza. The commission has deliberated on the various incidents happening in some parts of the country and has postponed the election scheduled to take place tomorrow, Saturday, to a further date to be announced in the following areas. The NASA team had earlier called upon the IEBC to do just exactly that. This government is unhappy that the people have rejected it. It has elected to fight back through violence, death and mayhem. The so-called fresh elections in Luanyanza is only an excuse to massacre unarmed citizens. It is also instructive that this zone is largely a Seventh-day Adventist church region. While condemning what they termed as extrajudicial killings meted on a specific community, the leaders reiterated that they will not recognize a regime that they say is keen to force itself on Kenyans. We are deeply concerned that Jubilee has now militarized elections. Conducting elections is now being used as an excuse and platform to commit genocide. This is well in line with this government's agenda against the people. The politicians went ahead to poke holes in the repeat presidential election exercise, arguing that the low voter turnout witnessed in Jubilee strongholds is an indication that they did not win the election even on the August 8th. The citizens have finally opened the servers that the IBC refused to open. The boycott has shown that the so-called numbers and percentages that Jubilee and Uhuru Kenyatta have been talking about were all along fraudulent. Uhuru lost elections in August. He has again lost this sham one in which he was basically running against himself. Meanwhile, NASA leader Ryan Odinga held a Meet the People tour in Kibra area, Nairobi County. Despite the running battles that have been witnessed between the residents and the police over the repeat presidential poll, according to Raila, Kenyans should expect a repeat of the presidential election within 90 days. Kenya walitikia wito wetu wa NASA kutokwenda kupika kuro kwa jubilee. Sabi ya mwa hazi tumesema. Mjuma tatu, mjatoa tarifa, na kuambia nyi nyote mwelekiu. Sasawa. The NASA leader is next week expected to name the goods and services that their supporters should boycott on grounds that they have been partisan. Chris, the Rokiti and News. All right, so that's just what happened a couple of hours ago. And I want to bring in my colleague, Duncan Hayamba, joining us uh, from CIA Live and Direct. Duncan, good evening. Let's talk about the reaction so far about the postponement of the vote in the county tomorrow. Betty, that uh, announcement by IBC Chair Fula Chebukati has come as a big sigh of relief to uh, residents of uh, this region, if you might call it as uh, Lua Nyanza, for the simple reason that uh, in as much as there have been that resistance to no election at all, it has come at a heavy price. Of course, on daily basis, whenever we've had that uh, confrontation between the, the NASA supporters, the youth allied to NASA and uh, the security personnel, 
the end result has been bloodshed, uh, 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 serious injuries. In some cases, it has resulted to death. So you can imagine tomorrow perhaps would have been a very uh, bad day as well, just like the rest. So definitely when that announcement came, it came as a huge surprise. And if anything that we've been able to uh, uh, experience uh, within the three or four stops that we went around the town and the environs of the Siaya town is anything to go by, then clearly it has come as a very big uh, sigh of relief to the NASA supporters and I believe by extension the country because the bleeding that was going on in these parts of the country, looking at the reaction on social media from mm. across the country, various stakeholders, everybody was really worried on what tomorrow exactly would look like. Right, Duncan, let's talk about a press briefing that uh, the NASA leaders had earlier and they cautioned their supporters against engaging with police officers, but evidently, like you're talking uh, to us and telling us, that really did not happen. So right now, with that postponement, what direction are the leaders there giving uh, their supporters? The supporters, they were told in uh, loud terms to keep off, to stay away. That is exactly what was being portrayed by the media in live coverage. But on, on re in reality, what was happening on the ground, we could also say some sort of resistance or defiance, whether it was by design or default, is an, uh, a subject of debate for another day. But uh, despite them being told to stay away from the roads, to stay at their home, away from the polling stations, that has not been the case, particularly in the regions that have been able to go through the six counties, constituencies that constitute Sierra County, uh, looking at the un uncountable number of roadblocks. The youth have actually been deciding to uh, conduct what they are calling a search, just to ensure that no election material uh, is moved from one point to the other. And it's at that particular point, that barricading and uh, a forceful inspection of vehicles is what perhaps has been leading to that uh, uh, confrontation. So in as much as them being given direction, that has always been uh, the case. So even as Monday they await that big announcement, probably between tomorrow and Monday something else might crop up. But when you talk to them, some of the issues that they are putting across, they have they sort of have already made some resistance within themselves and they are putting that message out loud and clear because their leaders have been telling them to keep away from trouble, but that has not been the case. So. That is the situation here on the ground. So even if they have been told to wait for Monday, perhaps mm. they'll decide to tell themselves what else to do at least. That is what I've been able to figure out as what happens in this part of uh, the county, uh, this part of the country. All right, Duncan. Also, just before uh, I let you go, let's uh, talk about uh, the people who were injured in uh, the chaos uh, yesterday and today. We know that uh, in neighboring Kisumu County, the governor has asked that uh, the next week could be a week of uh, mourning. Uh, what is happening with the people and the treatment that they're getting uh, from the various hospitals? Uh, in terms of uh, facilities, particularly yesterday and today, they've been closed. Even at such time, uh, even uh, the shops, they've actually remained closed. Particularly yesterday, uh, they suspected or whether they expected there could be ugly confrontation. So in terms of facilities for basic amenities, they've been closed. So you can imagine for those that get injured on daily basis, it is a tall order for them, and uh, many of them, we understand their nursing injuries, uh, homes and in some public facilities, they go there. Some claim that there's no medication, and of course, not everyone can perhaps afford to get that much-needed treatment in private hospitals. So it has been double tragedy. You go to the roads, you get injured, and then you cannot get anybody to attend to you, even moving you from that point to that facility. And for those who go to those facilities, they claim that when you go to the hospitals, there's no medication. So it has been a tough season for um, NASA supporters in this particular region. Again, whether it is by design or default, that is again another subject that perhaps can be interpreted politically, or if that is the reality, you cannot tell. But perhaps even before, uh, maybe what uh, Betty, I can confirm that might have informed the IBC chairperson to call off that exercise in the four counties, is uh, the resistance that has been mounted because all polling presiding clerks, uh, presiding officers, their deputies and clerks who had been trained and uh, given that uh, contract to uh, perform this exercise, 
actually just did resign and uh, there was no way that we were going to have personnel to conduct that exercise today or tomorrow. So perhaps that has been what has informed IBC to decide just to call off that exercise for now, Betty. Juu vile hali ilikuwa watu wa Siaya hasa mabijana ambao unaona hapa nyuma wana wanaimba na wana, wanasema mambo ya uhuru masgo wange wao karibu wote walishachukua kauli wakakata kauli kama kura itapigwa kesho ili wako ili wakufe vile huyu amesema vile watu vile watu vile Jacob vile Jacob juzi alisema Kisumu vile, vile Kinyata leoa watu hiyo mwaka wa 1965 watu wengine wazaliwa upya Eh. Mimi majina naitwa KC mwenyewe, komanda wa hivi vijana wa Konyumangu. Na mimi naambia naambia mzee president Sai hii kuarisha uchaguzi umesaidia mungiki ambao alileta hapa Siaya. Ingekuwa tungeoa hiyo mungiki yote. Na hii Siaya hii Siaya si Kenya hii. Lakini je ni maafisa wa polisi ambao wako katika maeneo haya mbona unatoa madai kwamba ni mungiki? Ah mazaa si maafisa wa polisi hawa ni all right, so residents of uh, Siaya County there earlier speaking to my colleague Duncan Hayemba. So from Duncan, we want to now proceed on and bring in uh, Ben Kitili, who's following up on the issues and uh, the situation really in Migori. Good evening, uh, the, uh, Ben Kitili. Thank you for joining us this evening. What can you tell us uh, from the ground? Uh, on the other hand, and, uh, in Siaya County, the residents there and the Nazi supporters have welcomed the move by IBC to postpone the election tomorrow. Are you hearing the same sentiments where you are? Well, good evening, Betty. Um, it has been utterly impossible to get uh, any reactions from the residents of the county of Migori following that decision uh, for, by the IBC uh, to you know, postpone the election that was set in the four counties to go down or to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, Betty, for anybody who has been to Migori town, and, or anybody who knows Migori town at night, it would, uh, we would tell you that uh, Migori is a very busy and buzzing town even at night but now it is 9 p.m and there's utterly nobody on the streets you mm -hmm. can almost hear yourself in an echo if you shout on the streets uh this start this is as, as a result of the running battles we did see early this uh, afternoon beginning at around 1 p.m when a very large contingent of anti-riot police uh, did descend on the town of migori to try and break up demonstrations just right down the streets where there's a, a bridge where a very big blockade had been erected. So the police did use tear gas to break up those, uh, th that, that riot and then uh, went on to go into people's uh, you know, residential houses to try and flush them out, to come out on the streets to try and remove the blockades. And what we've had are reports of uh, police brutality, Betty, mm -hmm. people uh, being... Uh, beaten up, even some of them live on TV cameras, as our viewers did see earlier this, af this afternoon. And we have seen the Kenya Red Cross have a very busy afternoon trying to ferry injured people, most mm. of them with gunshot wounds to various hospitals here in Migori town, Betty. And it has been a day that has overshadowed that very important story, the mm. election being postponed tomorrow. The latest, we're just from uh, the St. Joseph's Ombo uh, Mission Hospital, uh, just a few hundred of, uh, meters from where I am. And uh, that is just one of the hospitals that uh, the Red Cross did take the injured. And mm -hmm. we have uh, talked to the key, to the, to the major uh, medical officer there. He has told us that he did receive a total of seven people injured by gunshot wounds. And unfortunately, one person has died from that St. Joseph's Ombo Mission mm -hmm. Hospital. He was a 45-year-old man who was shot in the head uh, by police. And he did die shortly after you know, being admitted at the hospital. Three others were uh, undergoing minor surgeries. And one of them, Betty, very heartbreaking mm. image that is still on my mind, a 10-year-old boy, mm. a standard four people here in Migori town, Collins Ocheng was shot uh, on his behind with a bullet coming uh, mm. from his pelvis, uh, pelvic area. And he's uh, fighting for his life at the St. Joseph Mission Zombo Hospital here in Migori. Nurses trying to tend to him. That, and that is just, uh, you know, the story, uh, mm. the picture of the story uh, that is maybe going unnoticed here in Migori town, uh, Betty. 
All right, so Ben Kitsili, even just uh, hearing uh, you describe the situation, really unfortunate turn of events. But what are the area leaders, uh, you know, saying? What are they, what kind of advice are they giving to their supporters? Because with this confrontation with police, at the end of the day, you have the residents, the young people that you're talking about, the 10-year-old that you're talking about, getting injured, getting shot. So what really is the message that they're sending out, even as, uh, you know, they have this agitation for no election in that uh, county? We did uh, uh, speak earlier to the governor of the county of Migori, Okoth Obado, and he did uh, uh, state, uh, you know, did advise his followers and followers of uh, Raila Odinga and the National Super Alliance to not go out on the streets. And that was be before the IBC decided to postpone the election in the four counties tomorrow. Okoth Obado uh, trying to call out to his supporters, but also remaining uh, non-committal on whether he was telling them, you know, don't go out on the streets. It was not very clear. And the message from the people, from the leaders, of course, the national leaders uh, of the National Super Alliance have been uh, to the people here, don't go out on the streets. Not like they will listen very much, um, Betty. They have been very, uh, you know, driven in agitating for their rights and trying to follow what the NASA message has been, that no elections to be held in this county. They have been very adamant even with a large contingent of police uh, saying that they will make sure even if some of them are short they will make sure they uh, they prevent the IBC from uh, you know distributing the election materials in the polling stations in this part in this uh, county of Migori so the message is very clear from the leaders they have been you know shaken by the turn of events and the number of people that have been injured in those confrontations between demonstrators and police and they have been saying Betty that uh, urging their people even as we agitate for the reforms you know don't go out on the street saying that you know the police that have been sent here by the government have not been sent on a good mission so telling their supporters don't go out on the street they have not been listening very much though Betty all right, Ben Kitsili there reporting live and direct from Migori, just bringing us uh, to us down really what has been happening throughout the day, a difficult conversation uh, just having with him, him as he brings us up to speed with the devastating um, incidents that he has highlighted there uh, with regard to that engagement of police and um, the uh, residents there. So we wanted to take a breather here on uh, Kivumbi 2017, but also we will be having a conversation here in studio, maybe a difficult one, we'll just be looking at where we really we are as a country, how to move forward. Uh, the Standard newspaper this uh, morning had the headline, One Kenya, but Two Faces. So where really are we? I'll be introducing my...